out of speakers? We've run out of speakers. Oh my God. Um, that closes the public statement hearing portion of tonight. We're going to take a five minute break. And then um, anybody who wants to can stay for the procedural conference, but it's meant to be the formal parties that are participating. And I'm going to ask them to come up to the front because we're going to all be sharing this one microphone. So we'll take a five minute re recess. Can we ask a question? Um, let's go off the record. Uh, we're off the record. How do we become a uh, party to the process? Um, well, you were supposed to have applied a year and a half ago, but um, Why can't you it. Do that? Wait, 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 wait. People don't even know. Right. I, I just found out about it. It's so unfair. This happened also in up in the state of New York. Six years ago, the only person who knew about the PSC action talking, okay? was a gravel salesman. Quiet for a second. Um, I didn't say you can't become a party at this point, okay? Um, if you're going to be a party, the commission has some rules. Are they the same as the Article 7 or Article 10 no. circumstances? Yes. Yes. Strict. Okay. I, mean, you're, I think you're messing with the wrong people no. here. We don't want this. Nobody knows about it. It is so unfair. The public does not know about this. This isn't a true public hearing because today. I have been driving myself crazy with no sleep for a week trying to get this out. Okay. Um, let's talk about some things here. The Public Service Commission's jurisdiction is extremely limited in this case. The Public Service Commission is not going to decide the siting of the power plant. That was decided by the Planning Board. It's not going to decide whether or not there's going to be an air permit. That was decided by the DEC. The Public Service Commission's role is to decide whether CPB Valley, as a corporate entity, should be allowed to own a power plant. That's its primary task. It's a question primarily of economic regulation, not one of whether or not the power plant is good or bad. Okay? So if you want to become an active party, you need to demonstrate that you are going to participate in the jurisdictional matters of the commission and contribute to making a good record on those issues. Okay? So if you have something to say about those matters, I will welcome you in as a party. Okay, but it, but if you think you're going to come in and talk about fracking, I mean this is this I'm being totally honest with you. The, whether or not the gas comes from frack gas or not, the commission's not going to find that relevant in this case. The question is whether they form their corporation properly, and whether they filed their papers properly, and um, whether they've gotten the consents that they need from the municipalities. So, so what was the point of this? Well, we like to, we don't have a relevant standard at these public statement hearings. We let you come and say whatever you want, but we can't be responsible for whether or not you understand how it works, okay? The commission will listen to all this stuff. Um, some of it may affect their decision. There's one issue that was raised tonight that I'm going to raise with the applicant that's a new issue. Um, but you had a planning board that went through a process for two years. We didn't know. Well, I understand what you're saying. Oh, my God. So who, what is the legal right that we have against our planning board? Um, that's for you and your it, attorneys it, it, and your yeah, own people. It's going to cost us money because they have not informed the public. Again, the, the Public Service Commission does not police your planning board. Okay? We, we don't. And we do not police the DEC. But your decisions have to be pursuant to our state's energy plan and our overall state energy policy. And they don't meet. The and, and the plan and the policy does. The state does energy plan, the current state energy plan, the new one, promotes, which also promotes gas usage. So no, it doesn't. No, so I read the way the 2014 is under review and the 2009. Anyway. anyway. I read the, the, the commission <laughs> understands its own jurisdiction, and yes, it has to be in conf whatever they do. They try to be in conformance with this state energy plan. They will be in conformance and with other statutes. Governor Patterson's executive order 24 on curbing greenhouse gas emissions. It has right. to be consistent with that as well. And it does not. And it's not compliant with that. Well, it depends on how you want to look at it. I could argue that both ways. I, I have two questions. One yeah. is that for the argument of while there's a capital gain by all the infrastructure being put in this this county 
through this building, comparing it to the economic loss through the devaluation of property, what department in New York State regulates that? To hear that argument. Property values generally are not regulated in any New York State law. So where would you where would you pose this argument that my, this isn't going to be a benefit to the county because the property values will devalue so much it's not? The issue of whether it's a benefit to the county is not the issue before the agency okay. that has this That's jurisdiction okay. tonight. Okay, you could have raised that issue with the planning board. The planning board deals with your local property values much more than the, the state if does. They were aware. But but you have a you have a state that's home rule. Home rule means that the local government gets to make decisions about zoning and planning and stuff like that. So that's what happened in this case. Your town, who was appointed planning board members who were appointed by your elected officials, made these decisions. So so we're trying we're trying to do the best we can with our jurisdiction, but we, we are legally bound by our jurisdiction. What is your jurisdiction? Is is that the PSC has been refusing an interview. I've been trying to get an interview with the Public Relations Department, and they've been refusing an on-camera interview for two years now. And I'd like to get one, because there's no better way to give information to the public about what the scope of your decision is than to interview somebody like James Den or Pam Carter and ask them exactly what they know of it, or maybe get it from an uh, administrative law judge who's not party to the case. I don't know what their criteria is for interviews. Do you have any it's influence to request? No, that? no. Because this is no. They are they are at a different. Blind. They are at a more senior staff level than I am. It, they don't. I don't tell them what to do. If anything, they tell me what to do. <laughs> so, you're, are you saying that it comes down to our planning board? Yes. yes. And and um, if so, can all of this information be imparted and copied to our planning board? Um, that they care? The information you presented tonight will be available on our website. Every, every document is going to go in, every statement that was made. You can do with it whatever you wish. You okay. want to send a copy of your planning board, go ahead. Let's, let's be honest with the, with the members of the public, especially those who just uh, heard about the project. Mm -hmm. The planning board has already made the decision and the opportunity for legal challenge is over. And the fact of the matter is that the vast majority of the public were not informed about it. The finding statement, which was supposed to be published and noticed in the newspaper, we had to FOIA it one year later we had to FOIA it from the town in order to see the finding statement. It was not made available to anybody in the public. There are serious procedural violations. And if you're relying to a large extent on the entire docket and all of the, the documents prepared by the planning board, so you have to some, to some extent respond to some of these issues, especially all these procedural problems. In, in Sanford, we're uh, waiting uh, two years you for understand. a public announcement. We have our jurisdiction. Tonight we heard what you had to say, and we're going to take that back, and we will think about it and, and see how it fits into our jurisdiction. What is your jurisdiction? Our jurisdiction primarily is limited to whether or not the corporation was formed properly and filed all its paperwork the right way. Our, our role as the state agency is to be sure that if somebody opens up a big power plant and operates it as an electric corporation, that they have filed all their paperwork, they're a real entity. Now, does okay. that have to do with all their T's crossed, their I's dotted, all the environmental things that have been done? It properly. doesn't have anything to do with the environmental stuff. Okay. It's whether or not they form their corporation properly, which is a very simple matter. That's pretty simple. Yes. That, they're pretty much right. got the Now, if we were to find that they, they're not really a Delaware corporation, that they filed fake paperwork or something like that, then we would obviously not give them a certificate. Right, you would not give them so a absent that, you're going to okay. approve this? The, yes. I don't know what the commission's going to do, but I'm just trying to give you a realistic appraisal of what's going on. We okay, We have a limited jurisdiction. Okay, <coughs> The other question is whether they obtain the municipal consents that they need. Um, they the only municipal consent they needed here, from our point of view, was for the wastewater line. From Middletown. The, the, that statute is talking about a situation where you're crossing a public street, okay? And the, the public service law says if you're going to be an electric corporation and you're going to use the streets and highways to, to, to uh, put your mains or your wires or something across, you first have to get the consent of the local government to be on their street. 
and our job as a policeman is to make sure that they got it. Okay? That's our jurisdiction. Okay. All right? So you have to make sure they have all their permits. We have no, only that they have the consents that they need for being in the public the street. In that case. So so some of their permits are, are, are still under litigation. Here but they're, they're not consents that they need under the our statute. Okay. Like, for the instance, air, the, air the, is, the air permit, the site plan permit, those are not the consents that we look at. We only look at the ones that involve using the public rights of way. Okay. And what, and, and what, what law is that pursuant to it, or what statute? It's Section 68 of the Public Service Law. That you only have to look at the, the municipal zoning that they requirements? Not zoning. Oh. It's, it's the consent to be in the... It's, Think of it in the old, this statute was written in 1907, okay? It was not meant for this situation. It was meant for when Orange and Rockland first came into Middletown and said, we're going to run electric wires up and down every street, okay? The state said, if you're going to do that, the, the Public Service Commission is going to make sure you got permission from the city of Middletown before we let you do that. Okay, and we're going to make sure that you're formed as a corporation and you file with the Secretary of State. So if somebody wants to sue you and they can't find you, they can sue you through the Secretary of State. That's the way it works. Okay, that's really the function. So there's another, there's another wire. Uh, the, the power line is supposed to un be un go underground also uh -huh. to, to the uh, substation. Has that been... Does yes. it go under a public street? Yes, I'm sure it, it does. Okay, well then we'll, we'll ask it. it, 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 it and they to were supposed well. to get a zoning so, variance. So your your it's not, it's not decision, question. It's, it's your, your decision is primarily a ministerial function of just making sure I'm 21 and I can go to a bar. We're like we're like a policeman for those very minor things. But the citing power, this is the one where should there be a power plant or not? Right. In this instance, it's the planning board. Yes. Right. Okay. Now, un there's a new state statute which does, which by its terms, does not apply to these people because they they started their process before the statute, so they were grandfathered. Oh, yes, they're grandfathered. Okay. This is a there's a new state, state statute that gives the citing power to the citing board, which is not the public service commission. It's the citing board, which is a separate state entity. Is that a new one? It's a new one. Okay. But the, uh, yeah, Ms. Ms. Carter indicated. But but that has good things and bad things. Some communities yeah. say that that takes away their local power right. and, and shoves, you know, so you can go either way on that one, too. Yes. Uh, so there's no perfect answer to any of these questions, unfortunately. Well, it's in flux, but the, the issue... We have, we have to get going soon yeah. is the problem. We have to be out of here at 10.30. They've already the, given the us the an extension the from 9. The issue of the comment period, they only from 9 to 10.30. I thought the morning would be good. Today. Uh, that was an extra day I gave you. That's a, that's an Carter now, you understand? That was an extra day that I gave you. Okay, the well, comment you period normally would end tonight. Uh, okay. And I gave you an extra 24 hours because I've gone to enough of these things that people want to say, oh, can I please write one more thing down and give well, it to you tomorrow? We have, we have you. two opinions from Mr. Den and Ms. Carter. Ms. Carter said, consult with you to, to, to get your sense of that. And Mr. Den said, Submissions, that's only control date. Submissions will be accepted up until the time the commission actually makes a decision. You can Is send that you accurate or? You can send anything you want to us, okay? Whether we consider it or not depends on when we get it. We have a cutoff deadline. The current deadline right now is scheduled for tomorrow, okay? If you send something in the day before the commission is going to act, they're not going to have time to look at it. And it's not going to go through the process. The recommendations will be made already in advance. Right. Right. So as a practical matter, um, the, the cutoff is either tomorrow or some extended period if it gets extended. But well, it, uh, anything beyond that, you're just totally taking a chance. Well, that, that would be normally there is like a 10-day like a or 10 working day or two-week period as of any after the a hearing like this is concluded. No, there isn't. Where did you get that from? There were a lot of new well, issues. Well, every, every hearing I've been to, and if we look at like the EIS, uh, the final EIS, that that's a 10 day period. No, the minimum 10 days. There's a, there's a, there's a procedure yeah. in the DEC regulations for their time. Mm -hmm. For their time, right. Ours, you're supposed to come here and make your comment orally, and that's it. I gave you an extra 10 day to submit, an extra day to submit something in writing. That was a, that was an extra, from me, because I've gone to enough of these things. Right. Is there another authority I mean, that could stop this plant from being built after you? Well, I don't know if this plant's ever going to be built. Okay? Somebody has, some bank has to lend them the money to build it. 
okay? That normally doesn't happen unless they think they're going to get their money back in the marketplace. Like help. You know, we have, we're, we're in an area, an era now where they're in, all in competition with each other. The power lines, you, you heard, you, you explained them all. All these power lines, all these power plants, those power plants that went out of business, went out of business because somebody built a new gas plant that ran them out of business. Okay, these guys want to build a new gas plant to run somebody else out of business. But only, let's say there's 10 projects, only two of them are ever going to get built. And the marketplace is going to decide that. Whoever, whoever, but Whoever has the bank and gets in there first and can keep their project alive is the one that's going to get built. Blackstone is having a problem with Champlain Hudson Power Express. They're, they're the last entity in the world that Every have a project has a problem. Every project has an opponent. They're all fighting against the same things that you guys are doing here. And some of them will come out winners and will get built, and some of them won't. Well, the fact that they're having problems, and they're the strongest Everybody's financial, having problems. But they're the, the strongest financial entity going, and they're having problems, so it tells you the competition <laughs> among them. I, I, that, that's real. What would be the next authority that would have a hearing like this? Some other way This is probably the last one. This is it. Yeah. This is the only one. Your, your decision on your light and regulatory. Forget light and regulation. That means very, very little. Okay, light and regulation means the, the, these are private power plants. Okay, they don't sell to retail customers. Okay, the commission will not be setting the rate that they charge to retail customers because they don't have any retail customers. They only sell on a wholesale level. Light and regulation means the commission won't be doing a rate case to set their rates for retail customers. Okay, it's got nothing to do with environmental right. stuff. It's so purely economic. Yeah. You shouldn't worry about light and regulation. So if you're selling, if if you like, I'm just changing the scope of slide a little bit. If you're if you're a pipeline selling it to a main line, since you're not selling it to a customer, there's no justification for light and regulation. I mean, to to restrict or, or to apply regulation on that price regulation. We're talking about electric um, wholesale prices. We're not talking about pipeline. They're selling electricity into the marketplace. Right. They will either sell it through the New York ISO market, and the ISO will set the price okay. in a competitive bidding thing, or they'll sign a private contract with somebody, which will be competitively bid what, among other power well, plants. One other thing, what's the justification for the certificate of public necessity and convenience if the energy market is a global market right now? The, the question is whether it's publicly convenient to have them own a power plant. Okay. It's not whether the power plant is convenient. It's whether them as it, whether we should have. I mean, generally, the commission's philosophy is good competition occurs when you have many buyers and many sellers. That's classic economics. Okay. Here's another seller that wants to jump in. Okay. So the question for the commission is: Should we allow another seller into the market? If there's 20 sellers, you're going to get much better prices than if there's three. Okay, so that's what it's all about. But, but then we have a joker like in the deck with FERC and the capacity zone screwing up the whole market. But if you put 10 more sellers into that market... They will benefit. No, everybody would benefit if you had 10 more sellers in that market because the whole price in that market would go down. But it'd go but down, but end up at a higher market. level than where it yeah. should be without but the they're selling to this market. We've been it's irrelevant. This model. I want to ask you because someone mentioned here that they had an employee who was also working with the town of Wayweanda. Would that be a, not a good practice, a good business <coughs> practice, something that you would be? We don't police <coughs> that stuff. If you think something unethical is going on, you call the you. It's a, it's the a fact. Wait, I've it? got a related question, which is. Um, do you look at the other half of the equation, like let's say the town of Wei Weyanda, they probably have limited uh, experience negotiating deals like tax abatement for a project of this scope? We don't get into tax abatement at all. Okay, so you Ever. don't look at their merits whatsoever Never. with their deal. That they so what do you look at? And tax abatement goes, it's, it's not, a pilot agreement goes two ways. Some yeah, communities, I'm saying, I'm developers want a pilot agreement because they want to know how much their taxes are going to be for the next 20 years so that they can figure out how much money they need to make. The town often wants a tax agreement because they don't want to approve the power plant thinking they're going to get a million dollars a year and then the next year have them file a tax certiorari claim to cut that in half. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it works two ways. It's not necessarily a bad thing to have a pilot agreement from anybody's point of view. So you're, you're actually going to weigh the value of the deal that the town made and 
if they let's say they no we're it, not we're, we're, we're looking we are they looking do. we are looking at whether they are formed properly as a corporation yes. and whether they got the consents that they needed so why would so you need public that? input for that because the statute was written in 1907 and it says we have to have a hearing <laughs> Okay, but this, again, the statute was thinking if if um, if you had no electricity, and O and R was about to come to your community for the first time, okay, that's something you might want a hearing about. There might be three other companies that want to come instead of them. Well, CBD so is coming for the first time, and there are ten other companies who want to come in. But they're not selling retail, so there's no. They have an LLC out of Delaware, and they're trying to do business in New York State. <coughs> that's yeah, the, that's now, the, when I looked up, you, you, you could the easily say that, that they're from Spain, Russia, and Canada, and they'd still be in the same thing. We have companies that are internationally owned. We have utilities in New York that are internationally that are, owned. That are divide where their LLC is? But, but their history... Niagara, remember Niagara Mohawk? National Grid? English. They're Spanish. No, or no, they're English. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would draw Spanish. Why are they okay. in Maryland and an LLC in the, in the state of Delaware? Different markets. Because they probably have the best LLC tax law. Yeah, they right. do. I don't know but, why. But, and that's why they're coming <laughs> up to New York. So no. why? I don't know. But none of that's know. relevant. But why is that relevant? But, but excuse me. What do you care whether they, they are a good tax deal for themselves? I care that they're an LLC York? and that they're a limited liability. But it does matter that they're, they're all LLCs now. Every power plant is owned by an LLC. I know. I don't care. But their financial I history is going to be having an LLC with limited liability. We have a town board that doesn't know what the hell they're doing. No, they do know what they're doing. Well, they probably do, but they're not doing it in the best interest of the public. Right. What time is it? It is I, I really, you are. I have, I have, I have to go back on the record and do a very quick procedural conference. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to stop. 